Hi there, this is Harry and welcome back to my advanced English lessons where I try to help you to get a better understanding of the English language. If you like my lessons, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps. Thank you. This lesson is sponsored by Skillshare. So today's lesson is about advanced English idioms to describe a person or to describe people. So I'll go through them as I always do in, in the line. I have 15 of them today and then I'll come back and I'll give you some examples of them and hopefully then you'll be able to understand exactly what they mean and who they might apply to. As these are all about people, you might know people in your life to whom these expressions apply. Okay, so let's start. Pain in the neck, a party animal, a big mouth, happy camper, jack of all trades, slave driver, down to earth, bossy boots, Smart cookie, eager beaver, cheapskate, party pooper, couch potato. Somebody, I think most people know about that, couch potato. Wet blanket, cool as a cucumber, Cu cool as a cucumber. Okay, let me go through them with you and give you some examples. So, when somebody is a pain in the neck, it means they really annoy us. Now, we could be a little more rude about it and say he's a pain in the ass or pain in the neck, but it's just somebody who aggravates or annoys us. Oh, he's such a pain in the neck. Always just when I'm going home, uh, he gives me some extra work to do and I'm always late for my bus. He's a real pain in the neck. A party animal. Well, a party animal is somebody who likes to party. Oh yeah, that guy, he's out every Friday, Saturday. If he could, if there were parties on, he'd be on a Sunday as well. He always comes in to work on a Monday, completely wrecked, always tired. He's a real party animal. He, he lives for his parties. I'm jealous, actually. A party animal. Big mouth. Well, it can be physical, not a big mouth, but a big mouth is somebody who cannot keep his mouth shut. He likes to talk. And particularly if he's got secrets or what he thinks are secrets, he likes to tell everybody. Oh, don't tell Jack. I mean, Jack will tell everybody. He's such a big mouth. Nothing you tell him is going to be a secret. Believe me, you tell him it'll be all around the office, all around the university before you know it. He's such a big mouth. Oh, you, you're such a big mouth. Why couldn't you keep it to yourself? I told you not to tell anybody. Big mouth. A happy camper. Well, a happy camper would be somebody who can go and camp when it's not raining. So, yeah, if you've ever been camping and it rains, you'll know what that means. So when the sun shines, you're a happy camper. But in reality, a happy camper is an expression we use when somebody is just happy because something has gone right. Ah, his team won at the weekend. He's a real happy camper today. Yeah? Or he gets his bonus, or he gets his promotion, or he's on holidays. Ah, you're a real happy camper. Yeah, I can see it in your face. You're jumping with joy. A happy camper, somebody who's happy about anything, any particular good news that he gets. He doesn't have to work. He got the bonus. His wife had the baby. Whatever it might be. Yeah, he's a happy camper. I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this lesson. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. It's never too late to learn a new skill and even at my age. And if there's a specific skill that you're trying to learn and you're spending hours online looking for information, I know how frustrating that can be. Skillshare actually has everything in one place and it is the perfect place for you to start. From drawing techniques, and video editing to cooking, freelancing, and much, much more. It's a great resource for freelancers and entrepreneurs like me. It'll help you to learn a new skill and it'll support your own growth and the growth of your business. I've recently taken the Writing Fiction Four Exercises to Discover and Write Your Story course by Gail Foreman. In this course, Gail guides you through a series of exercises that will help you determine the core elements of your story and bring them together into something unique 
and personal. You'll learn how to pull from your own lived experiences to create a compelling and intriguing story that will drive you throughout the writing process. Did I find it helpful? Absolutely. It was really, really good and I'm glad I did it. And as a podcast presenter, I'm now thinking of enrolling in Amanda McLaughlin's course, Podcast Marketing, how to grow your audience with a marketing plan, social media and metadata tips. New premium classes are launched each week, so there's always something new to discover. The entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German. And Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 people who click my link in this description a free one-month trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this lesson. Jack of all trades. Well, we use this expression to describe somebody who's particularly good with the hands, can do almost anything and everything. Ah, oh, he's a jack of all trades. You, you wait until he gets that house ready. He'll do all the wiring for the electricity himself. He'll put up shelves. He'll install the burglar alarms. He'll hang the lights, the new light shades. He can do absolutely anything. If you ever have a problem, just give him a call. He loves doing it so there'll never be a problem. He's a real jack of all trades. He's an electrician. He's a carpenter. He's a plumber. Yeah, and he's an all-round good guy, a jack of all trades. Slave driver. Well, this is a, a real negative word here, slave driver. Slave driver is somebody who pushes people all the time. He never gives them a moment. When they finish one job, he wants to do another one. When they're halfway through a job, he's standing behind them, asking them, have they finished yet? Have they finished yet? When somebody goes to lunch and even if they're five minutes late he's checking up as to where they've been so he's a real slave driver so it's a very negative way to be described now down to earth the next one when we describe somebody as down to earth it means they've got no airs and graces about them what you see is what you get they don't try to be something that they're not they don't pretend to be somebody different okay ah he's a real down to earth guy he'll tell you right to your face what he thinks about it you mightn't like to hear it you know but he'll always give you his opinion and it will be an honest opinion he's a real down to earth guy now this could be either positive or negative depends on what you think if you don't like hearing the truth, well, then you might regard it as being a little bit negative. But if you don't mind and you like the honesty that people show, and it's, it's not always uh, that that we get, well, then, yes, it would be positive. So perhaps it's probably more neutral. So a, a real down-to-earth guy. Bossy boots. Well, this is definitely negative. A bossy boots is somebody who likes telling people what to do. Oh, you're such a bossy boots. You're my little sister, but you know, what do you keep telling me what to do? I should be telling you what to do. Don't you be telling me to do this and do that, or you'll tell mum or you'll tell dad. You're a real little bossy boots. My daughter, she was a bossy boots when she was young. She used to give my two sons a terrible time. Yeah, a real bossy boots. So really negative. A smart cookie. Okay, when somebody's a smart cookie, it means they're intelligent, they're bright, they're alert. Yeah, he's a smart cookie. He's going to go far. I mean, just give him any particular problem to do with IT and he has it sorted out in no time at all. He's a real smart cookie. So a very positive aspect about somebody's personality. An eager beaver, another way of describing somebody in a positive way. An eager beaver is somebody who's always willing, always able to do something. He gets into work at 7.30. He can't wait to start. He's a real eager beaver. When he was at school, he used to get home, run home, get his homework done, get his football kit, get out and train. A real eager beaver, always on the go. Eager beaver, eager to help, eager to please, eager to get things done. Lots and lots of energy, couldn't sit still for a moment. Eager beaver. A cheapskate, well, this is definitely negative, anything to do with cheap. When somebody's a cheapskate, it means they don't like or won't spend money, or they, what they do spend is on something the cheapest they can get. And of course, when you get the cheapest, usually what happens, you have to repeat and you have to spend more money later because the thing you bought doesn't last five minutes. Oh, he's such a cheapskate when it comes to presents. He always buys 
the same thing at the discount stores. You know, you can tell by the labels that it's 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 second hand or it's some disused or finished line. He means well, but he's a real cheapskate. And most of the time when he gives you a present, it's something you don't really want. Yeah. So it's not something really good. So he's a cheapskate. He doesn't like to spend money. He's a cheapskate when it comes to his clothes. He buys a lot of his clothes in the charity shops. I know it's okay and the money goes to charity, but really I don't think he's bought a new shirt or a new pair of trousers for all the years that I've known him. He's a real cheapskate. He's probably got lots and lots of money in the bank. Cheapskate. So a real negative meaning and a negative reference. A party pooper. This would also be negative. Party pooper is, is somebody who would be the opposite of the party animal. Party pooper is somebody who will always find an excuse not to go to a party that he's been invited to. Oh, don't mind him. He's such a party pooper. If you invite him, he'll stay for half an hour and then he'll make up some excuse and he'll go. He just doesn't like parties. He's real introvert. So where are you going? You've only just got here. I, 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 I hate to be the party pooper, but I really have to go. I don't feel well. Or I hate to be the party pooper, but I've got to get up for work in the morning and I, I, I really need an early night. So a party pooper, somebody who won't stay long at the party, who after an hour or so leaves the party or indeed will find some excuse not to go to the party. Party pooper, so negative. Now, this one, most people know, and most people have heard of it, a couch potato. The couch is the sofa, the place where we sit. And when you're a couch potato, you you vegetate. You, you just sit on the sofa watching TV all day. Oh, that husband of mine. I, I joined the gym. I asked him to come with me. No, he said he was too busy. But every time I come home, I, I know where I'll find him. He'll be sitting or lying on the sofa watching the TV. And if he's not watching the TV, the TV will be on and he'll be asleep. He's a real couch potato. Of course, he works hard all day, but really, I would love it if he could come to the gym with me or we could go out cycling together. But he's not into sports or into activities. He's a real couch potato. A wet blanket. Well, a wet blanket is not fun. I mean, if you want to go to sleep and you have your sheets and your blankets, you like them to be warm and cozy. And a wet blanket is not going to make you feel warm and cozy. When somebody is a wet blanket, they destroy everything. So if there's a fire in a house, people will get a wet blanket and they will throw it on the fire and it will kill the flames. So that's a positive. But if you describe somebody as a wet blanket, it means they dampen or put out the flames in every situation. So if the party is going really, really well and everybody's singing and dancing and then along comes this guy and he starts telling negative stories or he's in a mood and suddenly the atmosphere just dies. Oh, why are you such a wet blanket? Come on and join join in the fun. Everybody's having a good time. No, I don't feel like it. Didn't have such a good day. And yeah, that's a wet blanket. Or you go for a picnic to the, the local park with your friends and everybody's getting up, playing with the frisbee, playing a bit of volleyball, having a bit of fun. This guy is sitting there and when they ask him, does he want to join in? No, I'm okay. I'll just stay here. No, I'm okay. I'm you fine, you go off and play it. Ah, I think I'll go in a few minutes. A real wet blanket. Somebody who kills the atmosphere, destroys the atmosphere, and it puts everybody else in a bad mood, even though they may have been in a good mood at the beginning. A wet blanket. So, real negative. And then finally, cool as a cucumber. Well, you know, if you pick up a cucumber, it feels nice and cool, no matter what time of the, the day or the year you, you have it. So you've either kept it in the fridge so it's going to be really cool or you pick it out of the, the cool part of the refrigerator in the supermarket. So when somebody is as cool as a cucumber, they're very steady, they don't get upset or excited or anxious very easily. So they're a real good guy or person to have around when there's a problem, okay? Don't worry, Sam's there. He's as cool as a cucumber. He'll handle this problem, no problem at all. Just tell him what you want, he'll get it sorted. 
So Sam will go up to the hotel and he'll explain to them why we really need to have a room even though we haven't booked or if we're trying to get a reservation for a restaurant and we forgot to book it, he'll go up cool as a cucumber to the person tell them look we meant to make a reservation we won't be too late but we really like to have a table for four and yeah you've guessed it he'll always win he'll always get that table so he's as cool as a cucumber as cool as a cucumber when there's a some stress as cool as a cucumber when everybody else is anxious as cool as a cucumber when we need a cool head in a difficult situation so it's very positive to be referred to as cool as a cucumber. Okay, so they're the, the idioms, the advanced idioms that we use to describe people. Let me give them to you one more time. As I said, some, a lot of them are positive and others are, are negative. A pain in the neck, negative. A party animal, positive. Big mouth, negative. Happy camper, positive. Jack of all trades, very definitely positive. Slave driver, negative. Down to earth, neutral. Bossy boots, negative. Smart cookie, positive. Eager beaver, positive. Cheapskate, uh -uh, negative. Party pooper, negative. Couch potato, negative. Wet blanket, also negative. And then cool as a cucumber, we'll end on a positive note. Cool as a cucumber. Okay, I'm really happy that you've joined me. Try and practice those. See who they relate to, the people that you know in your circle. If you need any further help, let me know. This is Harry signing off. See you again soon.